This is lesson 4.4, proving triangles congruent, side, 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 and side, angle, side. In addition to being able to show triangles are congruent with all three pairs of sides and all three pairs of angles, you can take some shortcuts. If you know the three pairs of sides are congruent, that's enough to say that the triangles are congruent, and that rule is called the SSS postulate. How do you get all angles and sides congruent? Well, you're not always given all the information you need, but there are things to look for to get the extra pieces. Pause the video and jot this chart down because it will be extremely useful for getting the other pieces. It tells you what to look for, it tells you the statement you will make in the proof, and it tells you the reason for making that statement. If the triangles share a side, make that side congruent to itself with the reflexive property. If there's a midpoint, then make the half segment congruent to the other half segment with the midpoint theorem. If there's a segment bisector, make the half segment congruent to the other half segment. That's the definition of a segment bisector. If you have vertical angles, then make the angles congruent because vertical angles are congruent. If you have an angle bisector, Make the half angle congruent to the other half angle because of the definition of an angle bisector. Sometimes you have parallel lines with alternate interior angles. We'll make those congruent because alternate interior angles are congruent. And sometimes they even share an angle. Well, make that angle congruent to itself because of the reflexive property. Another thing to keep in mind is that if the proof says to prove triangles congruent, then prove them congruent, and your final answer will be whether you're using SSS, SAS, ASA, or AAS. However, if it says to prove segments congruent or to prove angles congruent, prove the triangles congruent first, and then say that those parts are congruent because of CPCTC, which says corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Always pay attention to your goal. Do you need to show the triangles are congruent, or do you need to take it one step further and say that the corresponding parts are congruent? So let's do a proof. Number two, given segment RS is congruent to segment UT and segment RT is congruent to segment US, prove that triangle RST is congruent to triangle UTS. Well, as always, start with what you're given. Segment RS is congruent to segment UT, and segment RT is congruent to segment US. And the reason we know that's true is because it was given to us. That's two pairs of sides. Since I'm thinking about the SSS postulate, I need to find out how to get that third pair of sides. So here's where you want to look at your chart. So what on this list do you see that's happening with our picture? And it's the shared side. So in the proof we'll say that the side is congruent to itself with the reflexive property. So segment TS is congruent to segment TS because of the reflexive property. You can mark that in the picture. And now we have all three pairs of sides. And since we have all three pairs of sides congruent, then the triangles are congruent. Write it just the way it says. Triangle RST is congruent to triangle UTS. Why? because all three pairs of sides are congruent, and that's SSS. So anytime you're proving triangles congruent, use what you're given, and then use that chart for all the other pieces that you might be able to figure out, like the shared sides or the midpoints, or any other ways to do that. Once you've got all the pieces, say the triangles are congruent. 
Another way to show that two triangles are congruent is the side angle side postulate, or SAS. If two triangles have two pairs of congruent sides and the angle between them, then they're congruent. Please make sure that the angle that you use is the angle between the two sides. Just like it's written, SAS, A is between the two S's, and the angle you use has to be between the two sides. Number two, given the measure of segment AB equals the measure of segment CD, and segment AB is parallel to segment CD, prove that triangle ACD is congruent to triangle CAB. As always, start with the given information and the reason is given. Now I need to find the pairs of congruent segments and the pairs of congruent angles. If the measure of segment AB equals the measure of segment CD, then segment AB has to be congruent to segment CD because of the definition of congruent segments. Now I have one pair of congruent sides. So if you look at the chart you made earlier, what are some other pieces of information that we can get from this picture? Well, the two triangles share segment AD. So let's make that segment congruent to itself. Segment AD is congruent to segment AD. And that's the reflexive property. So now we have two pairs of congruent sides. What else do we know? Well, we know that segment AB is parallel to segment CD. And when parallel lines are cut by a transversal, we have alternate interior angles that are congruent. So let's make those angles congruent to each other to get us an angle pair. Angle BAD is congruent to angle ADC. Why? Because alternate interior angles are congruent. Well, if you look, I have enough pieces of information now. I have a pair of sides, a pair of angles, and a pair of sides. Notice the angle is between the sides. And that's enough to say that the triangles are congruent. Write it the same way that they ask you to. Triangle ACD is congruent to triangle CAB. Why is that? Side angle side. So you had a pair of sides that were congruent because you were given their measures are equal. You had a pair of sides that the triangles shared so you could use the reflexive property there. And you had parallel lines cut by a transversal with congruent alternate interior angles. That's enough to show that the triangles are congruent by side angle side. So when you're trying to prove triangles congruent, use the information they give you. And if you need any extra pairs of sides or angles, look for other things they might not say, like the sides that they share are congruent. Vertical angles are congruent. Alternate interior angles are congruent. A midpoint will cut a segment into two congruent segments. A bisector will cut something into two congruent halves. Look for all of those extra things to get the pieces you need to say that the triangles are congruent.